tonight. They really, really did. And that wasn't against the tonight was against the backdrop of again, I did the top six show, I did straight facts. The squad, the squad breakfast club. I know a lot of you have watched that. If you haven't watched it, scan the QR code on the screen now. Go and support that channel and watch the show that came out today. The vast majority of people, whether it was Arsenal fans we've been talking to or whether it had been rivals, looked at this game as a 100% draw, if not a defeat. There have been so many gooners in the past 24 to 48 hours that have absolutely written their team off. The season is over. We're going to collapse from this point. There's no point. There's, there's no reason to watch. And I'm glad just from a sporting perspective to not see that from Arsenal. Arsenal came out today and you could see the nervousness in the first half. They had the majority of the ball. They had the ball in dangerous areas, but there wasn't quite the same flow amongst this Arsenal team. It was a little sticky. It was a little rigid. You could see the pressure of the last week had crept up on them. But what was really impressive tonight is they carried on fighting, they carried on pushing, they carried on persevering. And you can't win every game. And sometimes you work, sometimes you fight, sometimes it, it just doesn't quite come off for you. The goal that opened the scoring tonight from Leandro Trossard, I think epitomized the performance tonight from Arsenal, which was workmanlike, with a sprinkling of stardust. The way... Gabriel Jesus, who I don't think overhaul had a very good game again, if I'm being absolutely honest, but he lost the ball. Then he got the ball when he carried on fight and he knocks it back to Trossard, who hits a wonderful shot into the top corner. And from that point, Arsenal grew into the game. And in the second half, they were moving the ball brilliantly. Some of the one touch, two touch football at the ed edge of the box was amazing. Declan Rice just shut any opportunity down that... Wolves tried to create, Wolves threw their substitutes on, they attacked, they went for it, and Arsenal still shut that door. Defensively sound, I thought David Rea had an excellent game today. And as the match went on and went on and went on and went on, Arsenal got stronger and stronger. And I, I looked at it and thought, 1-0 probably doesn't do Arsenal justice in this game. When you look at the, the overarching performance, weren't quite as creative as they would want to be, but as I say, those nerves were there. And then Captain Odegaard added sort of the... Um, Sort of the the, the crowning, the, the the sort of the cherry on top of the icing, on top of the cake, and it was done. It was dusted. They get the three points. Arsenal can now, to a certain degree, relax until their next game against Chelsea. I think this will give them more confidence going into that Chelsea game. And their job from this point, and some people will laugh at the phrase that I'm about to use because that's the way the world is. But their job now is to put pressure onto Manchester City. I spoke to City fans this afternoon after their FA Cup semi-final win, and they said the same thing. They are they are rightfully the favourites to win. They're rightfully the best team in the league. But there is an element of tiredness and exhaustion in them. If you saw the performance today, if you saw elements of their game against Real Madrid, their manager keeps talking about how tired they are and how difficult it is. It is not beyond the realms of possibility that they drop some points. And as I stated last week, when every Arsenal fan worth his salt was throwing the season away, saying it was done, writing themselves off, you've got you, you've got to keep yourself in the race. And I'm so I, I genuinely mean this as a an ex sportsman myself. You know, I compete for my country. I understand it to a degree. This is a much higher level though, and I respect that. They didn't get that memo, and they said I am, and they went out there tonight. And as I say, they fought back. They put that pressure on. They showed some real steel to not just throw the towel in and give up at this point. And they're going to keep themselves alive. And in some respects, that could lead to more heartache because they could keep themselves right in it until the final day. And then it doesn't go their way. And it feels like a double dip disappointment. But that's how pushing through that adversity is what makes you stronger and makes you better. Throwing in the towel now, as many people have suggested, will only make you weaker in the future. You have to push through difficulty, anxiety, frustration, anger. When things you do in life fail, you've got to push through it. You can't just keep throwing the tail towel in. That isn't how winning is done. So look, Arsenal are not the favourites to win the league from this point, even though they sit top. But I really felt it demonstrated 
just wonderful fight, an excellent mentality shown by the team tonight. And it doesn't mean, because I know what pe some people will say in the comments, that Monterey, they didn't have great mentality against um, Aston Villa. I know, and they were criticized for that. But in equal measure, I'm going to praise them tonight because last season when they had those bad results against Liverpool and West Ham and then fell behind, the last five, six games of the season, they collapsed and they threw it away. They can't do that again this year. You've got to keep pushing right up until the end. And I think that shows um, a, a growth within this team, which I do believe exists. And, and, and they go from there. In terms of performances, look, I mentioned I, there was a few. I, I thought Gabriel Jesus was pretty poor again today. Kivio really struggled at left back in the first half, improved throughout the course of the game. I was surprised Saka stayed on the pitch so long. Again, I, I thought that Trossard should have stayed on when Martinelli came onto the pitch, maybe moved Trossard onto the left. But there were some really good performances again. Declan Rice just absolutely out of this world. I thought Saliba had another very, very good game. Ben White strong. Odegaard, like everybody in the first half, a little bit bitty. But he just kept on pushing, kept on working, kept his team together, kept them in shape, led them brilliantly. And he kind of finished the performance off with a goal. I'm now very, very excited about the game against Chelsea. Chelsea today actually played quite well up until the final third. They're going to fancy ending Arsenal season. Arsenal want to win to really put that pressure upon, of course, Liverpool and Manchester City. That are all, by the way, all three are still in this title race because this title race is 100% alive. Arsenal have kept it alive today. I expect Liverpool to win tomorrow as well to further keep the title race alive. It is very likely that Manchester City win the title from here, but I think it would be disrespectful to fans today, fans of yesteryear, and the history of both Liverpool and Arsenal for either club to throw in the towel at this point, concede defeat, and just literally start their planning for next year. That, for me, is not how champions are built, whether in... The first instance or the second, you need to keep persevering through it. I want to get your views and I want to get your opinions on this in the comment section below. We have some super chats here. The first one says, I wonder how many hate alongs were ruined today. Probably quite a few. Uh, this should have been our midfield from the beginning. Arteta's stubbornness doesn't uh, almost cost us. When you say this midfield, do you mean the, 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 the midfield that ended the game? With, is that what you mean? Or the, or the midfield that started the game? I'd love to understand what you mean by that. Because the midfield that started the game has got Kai Havertz in it. And I thought he wasn't very good there. You have to specify that for me, my friend. Uh, me on Wednesday, season is over. Today, we are top. You are top today. And th that's a fact. And I'd rather be top by one point with a team having a game in hand over me rather than not be top at all. <laughs> like, anything can happen in football. What's to say that? City player then gets sent off in the first 10 minutes against Brighton for a penalty and they score it. And Brighton go on to win the game. Imagine if that happens. Okay, I'm just it's hypothetical, but imagine it happens. But your players threw in the towel today and lost. Imagine. <laughs> Crazy logic to throw it away. I've said that all week. Important for Arsenal to keep the pressure on Man City. It absolutely is. Uh, we can be five points clear before City play again. Four points, unless my maths is terrible. Four points clear you could be, not five points. Uh, a, rusty win, a rusty win, which was very important. Now we need to have a strong mentality and believe we can do it for the rest of the games. So let's build on this. Uh, we'll win because the title race is still on. So come on, you Gooners. It is still on. And I, I like the fact you're brave enough to admit it, my friend. That's, genuinely, it's, it's really, really good to see people do that. And... Do you know what's interesting about this for me? It was a rusty win, and you will get the detractors of Arsenal that will say, but you scraped it, it wasn't convincing, etc. These are the same people that when you got beat by Aston Villa a week ago, said that at this stage of the season, when it comes to teams in the title race and them winning games, performances are irrelevant, and it's all about the dubs. It's all about the W's. And this is the problem I have with a lot of people in, in, in the social media world at the minute and fan content world is that they speak out of both sides of their mouths far too much. We all change our opinions. You know, we all learn new things and change. But you can't one week say it's all about results in a title race and then a week later moan about getting a result. If you do that, it means you're shrouded in an agenda. 
Uh, six away clean sheets in a row for Arsenal. I mean, it's just phenomenal. It, it, that in itself is, is something to be very, very proud of if you are a, a, a gooner. And listen, if more of that continues, you know, this just shows what type of team is being built here. It really, really does, because that is that is no mean that is that is no mean feat to be able to do that. I don't know how many teams in Premier League history have done it. I assume Chelsea must have in that brilliant season. Man United have probably done it at some point, but it's a very, very good in achievement indeed. It really, really is. Uh, pushing till the end will also help them next season. Listen, it, it, of course it will. Of course it will. And I just don't like the idea of people being quitters. Why would you want your team to quit? I've just not understood that, that logic all week. I'd rather go out on my sword fighting than... I'll give you an example. <laughs> and it might not be an example that you all that you all get and you all like, but I, me and my dog were attacked today, like d very badly attacked. I was quite fortunate; I had quite thick clothing on. We're out for a walk, and I could hear loads of dogs in the distance, and it didn't sound like they were on leads; they were barking a lot. So I got Rocky and I put him on his lead, and I said, "Right, we're going to walk around the edge, um, so that you try and avoid other dogs as best you can, especially if you don't know them or whatever else." And about 50 meters away, I see all these dogs. There was two big black German shepherds and then these gun dogs. And there's about seven or eight of them in totality. And they saw us and they just started running towards us. Damn, what do I do? <laughs> do I run and leave the little puppy? Do I fight? I mean, I'm probably going to get hurt here. I took him off his lead. <laughs> this poor puppy, right? He's big, but he's a puppy. He just started looking at me and said, what to do? And I just said, get him, right? I, he doesn't even know what that means. And we had a bit of a barney with his dog. I had to kick a few. I got my, my top ripped. Thankfully, they went for my legs, right? <laughs> and they ripped the whole bottom of these waterproof padded trousers that I have. Because we walked through, me and my dog walked through streams and lakes. I have really thick trousers on. And my dog got bit a few times. I've moved a few away. And the person who had the dogs kind of broke it up. And another dog walker got involved. I walked off with my dog. And he was all right. He was a bit shaken up. I was like, yeah. We didn't win that fight, right? <laughs> we got battered by them six dogs. But we went down swinging. We went down swinging. And that's just, I think, how you got to be in life at times. You, you've got to go down swinging. If you're going out anyway, you might as well swing. Do you know what I mean? I was getting bit whatever happened. I just thought I'm taking some of these mutts with me as well. And I got one right in the head as well. And listen, I love animals. I never want to hurt them, but I'm going to protect mine always <laughs> over anybody else's. you got to go down swinging, people. Simple as that. Uh, I'm an Arsenal fan. Big up yourself, AMT. Uh, listen, we're going to bring the panel.